Hi there and welcome to Van Life Devotions. We are in the beautiful city of Athens and where I'm standing is Mars Hill. This very area was the scene of a remarkable message by the Apostle Paul and the probable commencement of the first church here in Athens. In our last devotions, we looked at Paul's remarkable defence of the gospel. About an hour's drive from here is Corinth. Lisa and I won't be going there on this trip, but we have on a previous trip. We really enjoyed going to Corinth and walking around the ruins of this ancient place where Christianity at one stage was quite significant. Paul, Silas, Timothy, Aquila and Priscilla were the team that planted the church at Corinth. At first, Paul went every Sabbath to the synagogue, trying to persuade the Jews and Greeks that Jesus is the Messiah. Some became believers and were baptised. Several Jews were beginning to be offended by Paul's message. But one night, the Lord appeared to Paul, telling him to keep on preaching, to take courage. God is with him. And so he stayed with Aquila and Priscilla for a year and a half, earning income as a tent maker while he preached everywhere in the city of Corinth. The Jews made a united attack against Paul and brought him to this place before the proconsul on the accusation of conducting illegal teachings. According to tradition, this side of Paul's trial was the Bema, a large elevated rostrum standing prominently in the centre of the Roman Forum of ancient Corinth and from where the city officials addressed the public. In a remarkable turn of events, the Jews were told to go away and solve the issue themselves. And Paul, he was released. He stayed a bit longer, but then he moved to Ephesus. He remained in contact with the Corinthian church through letters and messengers, sending them warnings and instructions. Paul's two letters to the church at Corinth addressed problem areas. They had divided loyalties to different leaders. There was immorality in the church. Believers were taking each other to court. Paul addresses women's involvement in worship services and deals with problems that the Corinthians were having in their gatherings, including abuses of the Lord's Supper and their misuse of spiritual gifts. And there was also confusion over the future resurrection. In his second letter, Paul had to cover much of the same territory again. The Bible doesn't say anything else about the church at Corinth. However, Clement of Rome wrote a letter to them, probably near the end of the first century, almost 50 years after Paul's time ministering there. And he had to deal with some of the same issues again. Despite all the problems that the church at Corinth had, Paul refers to them in his letters of those who were sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people. It would be easy to read 1 and 2 Corinthians self-righteously with all of their problems, yet the same problems can be found in our churches today. The church still needs 1 and 2 Corinthians to know how to deal with today's issues. If there was one value that if believed in and practiced, Our homes, our communities and churches will be incredible places. That value would be love. Love for God and love for one another. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 to 7 these beautiful words. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, 
always hopes, always perseveres. What a wonderful passage. Let's pray. Lord God, if there was something that these letters to the church here at Corinth could teach us, it would be to love. Love you and love one another. Help us to fulfill your greatest commandments. O oh God, preserve us who travel. Surround us with your loving care. Protect us from every danger and bring us in safety to our journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.